How's it going everyone? Pop-Tart here, welcome back to the R-Team channel. Today I'm going to be showing you how to build the Canton Bolt Carrier in 1 to 5 scale. While the Canton might not be a world-famous name among ships, I used it to create a direct replica of a very real cargo ship rather than making a generic model. It's quite young, being built in only 2013, and it is based in Panama. Under the umbrella category of a cargo ship, it is specifically a bulk carrier, with five large cargo compartments embedded in the hull. These can be loaded and unloaded with these four massive cranes above. So, as for the build itself here, as I mentioned, this is in 1 to 5 micro scale, meaning that every 5 meters in real life is equivalent to one block exactly. This will be perfectly to scale with all of our other micro ships on the channel. Now, before we get started, as always, this build does make use of our very own custom Aero Team texture pack. A download link to the latest version of this pack can be found in the description below if you don't have it already. Now, if you are stuck using the default pack, if you're following along on console or something, I will always do my best to show you how to go about building this in default, but please do keep in mind that I highly recommend using the Aero Team pack instead, if you can, as it'll look much better. Anyways, with that all out of the way, let's get going on this tutorial. Alright, so first things first, here's some dimensions for you to help you figure out where you want to put this. This ship is 36 blocks long, 5 blocks wide, and 11 blocks from the keel to the highest point, or 9 blocks tall from the waterline to the highest point, depending on how you want to display it. So just keep that all in mind as you're getting started. So with that, let's get going on the first layer, layer 1. Alright, so for layer 1 here, we'll be starting one block below the waterline. That means that if your waterline is here, like so, you'll be wanting to start right here. Now, however, for large charter ships like this, this is up for a little bit of interpretation. In most sailing configurations, that's about the depth that it would be, with the red here being visible one block above the waterline. However, the red paint does also represent the maximum waterline. This means that if the ship is fully loaded with a very heavy payload, it can submerge to that depth, meaning that that would leave you at two blocks below the waterline here for layer one. And there are pictures of the ship operating at both of those depths, so it really is up to you depending on how you'd like to store it. So just select that depth beforehand and you'll be good to go. Of course, if you are building this out of the water, though, as I am here, that doesn't really matter. You can just build it wherever you'd like, but that is something important to keep in mind. So with this here, I'll clear this all out of the way, and we'll be starting off with the polished granite slabs. This is a red slab and stair color here in the Aero Team texture pack. If you are in default, you'll be wanting to use bricks instead of uh, polished granite to blend with the red concrete, but this is the material here we're using in the Aero Team pack. So... Starting off here, we have a total of 29 of these top slabs going back from the center. So that's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, and 29 right there. Now out to either side, we'll come back up to the front. Skipping this first block going back here, out to either side of the second block, we'll place a top slab right there. And this will go back for a total of 26. So we have one here already. That's going to be 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, and 26. Like so. That should be two blocks short of the rear right there. And the same thing on the right side. So that's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, and 26. Like so. And that is everything for layer 1. Alright, so for layer 2 here, we'll be starting immediately on top of this very first top slab from the previous layer. We have a single red concrete right there on top of that, with one more going forwards. Next, we're going to place a jungle button out to either side here. In the R-Team pack, this is a white wool texture. In default, just use a birch button instead but that white there represents the start of the depth markers at the bow of the ship. Now out to either side of the second block back, we'll place an upside down red stair facing forwards. Again, that's the polished granite stairs in the Aero Team pack, more bricks in default. And then two red concretes going back from that on either side. Then we have a red top slab out to either side of that last block there, with a total of 22 red concretes going back from both of these here. So we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, and 22, right there. And then 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, and 22, like so. Next we've got two red top slabs going back from both of these right there. Now coming in towards the center here to close this off. Shut up, villager. <laughs> we have four red concretes going back here. So that's one, two, three, and four. 
one, two, three, and four. Next, back from this here, we have an upside down red stair going back from both of those rows, and a red top slab behind, like so. Then in towards the center from that uh, red stair there, to close that off, we have a red concrete full block right there, and an upside down red stair going back from that, and a red top slab. Next, we're going to place a skeleton skull going back from that top slab right there for the propeller at the rear. Then we're going to place an andesite wall back right here. In the air team pack, that is again a uh, red texture right there, and that's the andesite wall here. In default, just use bricks instead. Now, if you do have access to world edit, we can use a little trick here to make this a little bit nicer. So for this, we're going to place down a wall just anywhere, and then one more going forwards from it here. We're going to grab a stick, or whatever item you'd like, type the command slash repl0 to switch this over to the replace tool, and then select this rearmost wall by left-clicking on it right there. We can clear both of those out now, and then paste over the wall by right-clicking on it, like so. That gives this wall here, representing the rudder, a more realistic, elongated shape here. It's not too crucial of a detail, the wall itself represents the rudder just fine, so if you don't have access to world edit on console or something, it's alright to just leave those out. But if you do have access to world edit, I highly recommend that you do use these tricks. Anyways, that is everything for layer 2. Alright, so for layer 3 here, we'll start off right on top of this row of two red concretes from the previous layer. We have a red concrete full block right there on the rearmost block, with a regular red stair facing outwards out to either side like this. Then we're going to place an upside down stair facing forwards, just in front of that right there. That'll kind of make the bulbous bow shape right there. And then we can place a temporary block out to either side of that stair, and then use that uh, world that it replaced trick to get a jungle button tricked into staying on that stair right there. That'll finish off the depth markings there. And again, you don't have to include it, but I highly recommend that you do if you can. Next, going back from those two stairs there, we have a single red concrete full block right there. Then out at an angle again, one more on top of both of those uh, slabs from the previous layer there. Next, we can grab the dead bubble coral fan, and we'll place that on the front of that block right there. In the arrow team pack, this is in a uh, vertical slab right here with the red texture. That will make that uh, layering much more smooth. In default, you can just use an upside down stair instead in its place, but this is a much more consistent layering shape here. So, uh, use that if you can, and uh, yeah, so now that we have that one red block right there with the red concrete, we're going to make that a row of 27 in total going back. So we have one to go already, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, and 27. Like so. And on the right side as well, one here already. So that's 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, and 27. Like so. Next, two red top slabs back from both of those red concrete rows right there. Then in towards the center from that to block that off, we have three red concrete blocks, one, two, and three, sticking out one past. Then we're going to place an upside down red stair facing out to either side, behind both of those right there, with a red concrete in the center to block that off from the underside. Then we have an upside down red stair facing backwards right there. And then what we're going to do is grab a barrier and the activator rail. So the arrow team pack here, the activator rail is a red trapdoor material like this. We're going to place this on the top half of this block right here just to flush that off a little bit more nicely from the underside. So for this, we're going to place a barrier out to either side of that uh, wall from the previous layer right there, out to the other side of the rudder. We'll place the activator rail right there. And it's important to note that the top half block right here is on one of its two directional orientations. So as you can see here, if I place this the other way, that's the bottom half right there. So the top half is on the east-west orientation. So just make sure you find uh, whichever way is uh, correct for your orientation of the ship and place that right there. We'll also place this on the left side right there, just like this. Now if you don't have access to this here, you can just use an acacia trapdoor in default, but this is a more consistent coloration. So with that, that is everything for layer 3. Alright, so for layer 4 now, we're going to be switching over to the black wool as we finished off the red painted portion of the hull. So we're going to be starting on top of that upside down stair from the previous layer there with a single black wool full block, then a netherite stairs upside down facing forwards from that there, with an upside down stair facing forwards off to either side of the full block right there. Next, we'll place a wither skeleton skull out to either side of that um, upside down stair right there, the outer two that is, for the anchors on either side, and then we'll place a single block going back right here, black wool full block that is back from both of those stairs. Now between these two here, we're going to place a smooth stone full block right there, and then we're going to grab the light blue glazed terracotta. And in the air team pack here, 
This is a uh, half stone brick, or smooth stone rather, and half black wool utility. So it's on one of the four orientations. So find whichever one it is for you where the black wool is on the bottom half, like this. Should look just like this. So for me, that is, let's see, facing down the ship, like this. So just find whichever orientation it is for you. And we'll place that actually in place of this black wool faux block right there. So that'll give the black wool on the outside here with the smooth stone on the top half for the deck detailing here. And if you're in default, you can just leave that as a black wool full block if you'd like. So going back from this now, we're going to come out at an angle here from this uh, outer black wool right there. And we're going to place six black wool full blocks going back right here, starting on top of that vertical slab. So that's one, two, three, four, five, and six. And one, two, three, four, five, and six right there. Now out to either side here, we're going to place a jungle button, or again, birch button in default, and then three smooth stone top slabs across the center right here. Next, we have five black wool blocks going back. One, two, three, four, and five. One, two, three, four, five. Then another three top slabs across the center right there. And then another five blocks going back here. One, two, three, four, and five. One, two, three, four, and five. Your three top slabs across the center, and this time another jungle button out to either side right there. And then five more blocks going back. One, two, three, four, and five. One, two, three, four, and five. And your three smooth stone top slabs across the center. Next, we're going to place five more blocks going back. One, two, three, four, and five. And one, two, three, four, and five. This time it's going to be three nether brick top slabs across the center. One, two, and three, like so. And a jungle button out to either side right there should give you a total of three of those jungle buttons on either side. Next, we have six black wool full blocks going back. One, two, three, four, five, and six. One, two, three, four, five, and six. Nether brick top slab, back from both of those right there. And then three black wool across the center to join that up. And then we have a single jungle button right there on the rear face of that center block. This button represents the lettering on the back, spelling out Panama, the country of registration. And that is everything for layer four. Alright, so for layer 5 here, on top of this upside down stair from the previous layer, we'll be placing a single half slab right there, with an iron bar going back right there to start off the mast. Then we have a netherbrick half slab out to either side right there, one more going back, and then one more out at an angle. Next we can use some world edit tricks again to place in two jungle buttons on the side of these um, two slabs right here. So, two temporary blocks out to the side there, a jungle button, select that with your replace tool from earlier, clear that out, and then paste over those two temporary blocks. And the same thing on the other side here. This is for the white lettering spelling out Kenton on the on uh, both sides of the bow right here. Then going back from the uh, mast right here, we'll place a smooth stone slab right there behind that iron bar. Then we have a row of three jungle trapdoors across the center right here. In the arrow team pack, this is a smooth stone texture, like so. If you're in default and don't have that, you can just use an iron trapdoor instead with smooth stone underneath it to seal it off so you can't see through it. Then we're going to place a row of three smooth stone slabs across the center right there, and we're going to bring this back to make it a 3x4 box. So that's one, two, three, and four, like so. That should meet up with that slab from the previous layer right there. This is to start off the cap of the first of the five cargo compartments in the hole right here. Then we're going to grab the spruce trapdoor, which is the stone texture in the team pad here, or again, iron trapdoor in default and bring this alongside here to be in line with the um, smooth stone slabs right there. And then, leaving the center block of those three empty right there, we're going to place a jungle trapdoor on either side, like so. Next, we're going to grab the mossy stone brick wall and place that in the center right there. In the R-team pack, this is a stone texture. In default, you can just use stone bricks. But this will be the base of the first of the four massive cranes here. So, with that now, we'll grab the smooth stone slabs again. We're going to place another 3x4 box for the second cargo compartment. One, two, three wide, and four long. Box that off. Then the gentle trapdoors out to either side there. Mossy stone brick wall in the center. Another row of three. Then two, three, and four. Mossy stone brick wall in the center. Gentle trapdoor out to either side. Then another 3x4 right here. One, two, three, and four and your fourth and final crane base right there with the stone wall. Smooth stone trapdoor out to either side, and then the fifth and final. One, two, three, and four, like so. That'll be the fifth uh, cargo compartment cap right there. 
Next, we're going to grab these spruce trapdoors again, and just bring that all the way back to be in line with the row that we started back at the front. So just bring that all the way down there. And that's going to be uh, flush in line with the very last smooth stone slab that we placed right there, like this. So with the cargo deck done there, we're next going to move on to the superstructure here at the rear. So for this, we're going to grab the light blue glazed terracotta again. Now up at the front there, we use the orientation with the uh, black wool and the uh, smooth stone. Now we're going to use the orientation with the white wool, and we're going to look for the orientation where the white wool is on the top half of the block, like so. For me, this is facing down the ship this way, so just place three of these with a one block gap behind the smooth stone slabs right there, and this will start off the white coloration of the bridge superstructure there. If you're in default, you can just leave these as uh, white full blocks, but it's more realistic to have that black wool band on the lower half, like so. Next, we're going to grab the Acacia button, which in the Aerotine pack is a black wool texture, like this. Use uh, Darkstone instead, in, or Blackstone rather, instead in default. We'll be placing three of these on the front of that section right there to represent the windows on the front. Next, out to either side here, we're going to have a black wool full block, and then we're going to grab the Dead Fire Coral Fan, which in the Aerotine pack here is a black wool vertical slab. In default, you can probably use a netherbrick stair like this just to still get that a little bit of that curvature in, but this is uh, more realistic for it to be that blunt square face. So we have one of these vertical slabs in front of both of those black wolf full blocks right there. Next, we're going to use that same uh, light blue glazed terracotta, again, um, or rather this time, in the orientation where the black wool is on the top half with the white wool on the bottom half. For me, it's this way here. So place two of those, going back from both of those black wool full blocks right there, and that white will represent a little bit of the catwalk superstructure around the edge there. Then we're going to place four black wool full blocks going back, one, two, three, and four, and one, two, three, and four. Join this up with three black wool in the center, and then we're going to place three jungle buttons across the center here, one, two, and three, like so. Where the uh, lettering down here said Panama as the country of registration, this is the larger lettering saying Ken Con. Forgive me as well for my continual pronunciation of that. I'm actually not sure which language uh, the name Ken Con uh, derives from, so I have no idea how to pronounce it. That's just how I've been pronouncing it the whole time, these past several years since I've built it, and it's likely entirely incorrect, so my sincere apologies, I'm, I'm doing my best. But that aside, that is layer 5 complete. Alright, so for layer 6 here, we're going to start right up at the bow here and place one more iron bar going up from that one from the previous layer there to continue on the forward mast. Then we're going to skip all of the crane sections here. We're going to put this in right at the end of the tutorial. So we're just going to move all the way ahead to the rear superstructure here. So for this, we're going to place three white wool blocks on top of the uh, terracotta utility from the previous layer right there, with three more acacia buttons forward from that for the uh, window detailing there. Next, out to either side, we're going to have a top half smooth red sandstone slab, like so, for the lifeboat stowed there. Then we have a birch trapdoor on the top half of that block for a little bit of the walkways around here. And we're going to grab the light blue glazed terracotta again, and with the orientation with the black wool on the lower half there, and white wool on the top, we're going to place one of those towards the inside right there. That'll give some larger windows along the side here. In default, you can probably just leave those out, but it won't look as good. So, next we have a solid block of wool in the center there to close that off, then a row of three going back from that there with the wool, and a second row of three, like so. Next, we're going to grab the light grey glazed terracotta, and in the aerotine pad here this is a grill texture, like this. And we're going to place three of these going back here for some vents on the rear of the superstructure here. And as with previously, the orientation of all glazed terracottas does matter, so uh, the orientation we're looking for is with the grill's horizontal. Uh, like this here. There's another orientation where they are arranged vertically, and that's not the one we're going to use here. In default, you could probably just substitute black concrete to kind of allude to it, but this is a more detailed approach for that, um, well, detail that's uh, accurate to the real world. So, with that there, we're now just going to place three jungle trapdoors going back from that there to seal off that um, uh, rear deck right there. And then we'll grab the dead brain coral fan, which in the Aerotine pack is a white wall vertical slab, like so and we'll place three of these alongside here. And we'll do the same thing on the right side here, so that's one, two, and three. In default, if you uh, don't have that vertical slab, you can probably just uh, omit that entirely, but the shaping won't be as accurate to the real ship. And with that, that is layer six complete. All right, so for layer seven here, we're going to finish off this forward mast by placing a jungle fence on top of that uh, iron, or iron bar right there from the previous layer. In the R-team pad here, that's a white wool texture, just use birch instead in default. 
So, uh, we can also make this a little bit more accurate to the real mast shape as well by using some more wool that it trades. So, for this, we're going to place three across the center, uh, right here, or um, aligned horizontally, rather, like this. You can select the center one with world edit and clear those out, and then paste it over like so. That'll give the forward mast those outward facing arms that the real one does. Otherwise, if you're in default, you can, or without world edit, that is, you can probably just use a uh, fence there in its place and perhaps drop an end rod out to either side to represent uh, that same detail, but it will be a little bit more exaggerated and less realistic that way, so that's why I chose to use that design instead. So with that, moving on to the rear superstructure here, we're again going to place three white bull blocks on top of those ones in the previous layer there, with three acacia buttons forwards from that. Next we have a wool top slab out to either side right here, with a wool trapdoor going back from that on the top half right there, and again that same uh, half black half white utility from the previous layer right there, with the black wool on the bottom half for those side windows there. We'll place a block of wool in the center there, then one, two, and this time three uh, layers of the white wool there to make a 3x3 three three box right there, since we don't have the vents from the previous layer. And again, three vertical slabs out to the sides to flush that off. And with that, that is everything for layer 7. Alright, so for layer 8, we are entirely done with the forward section there, so just coming to the superstructure, we'll be placing three of those half black, half white textures there, with the black wool on the lower half, like so. This gives the continuous uh, glass strip for the bridge at the top of the superstructure there. One trick you could use in default instead of this to represent the bridge glass is to use white wool with uh, three dark oak signs across the front, but I quite like the look of this here, so this is what I'm using instead. So we have that there for the bridge, then three blocks of wool behind that there. We're going to have a birch trapdoor closed against either side of that wool block right there. And then we'll place a birch trapdoor on top of that uh, wool top slab in the previous layer there, just to finish off this bit of a superstructure protrusion there. And same thing on the left side. Next we have three uh, more wool blocks going back right there, with an acacia button out to either side for another window there. Then uh, coming back here, let's see, we're going to skip a block from the center and place a smooth stone full block on the second block back right there to start off the smoke stack. And then out to the side right here, where we have these three um, vertical slabs only on the right side, not on the left side, but on the right side here, from the center block of those three, we'll place an iron trapdoor, or an iron bar rather, going up like so to start off a mast on the right side. And that is everything for layer eight. Alright, so for our last three layers of the superstructure here, we have layers 9, 10, and 11. So to get started on this, we're going to grab our jungle buttons now, and on the left block of this row of three here, from the bridge glass, we'll be placing a jungle button aligned parallel with the ship, just like that, only on the left side. Then going back here, we're going to grab the jungle fence. We'll place one on the outermost two blocks of the, or outermost block rather, of that row of three, the last one right there, and then one more going up from it, like so. Well, let's grab a birch trapdoor. We'll place a top half birch trapdoor in the center between the two there, and then a bottom half one on top of both of those right there. And then in the center here, on top of that bottom trapdoor right there, or top trapdoor rather, the bottommost one, we're going to grab a head and place that right there in the center. Now here I used a wool head. This is from a plugin called HeadsDB that we have on the server, so if you have access to any kind of plugin like that, or an online resource that you can use to get a command for this, then you can use that instead if you'd like to blend in nicely with that, just to give that more uniform coloration for the mask detailing up here. Otherwise you can just use a skeleton skull. It's pretty white anyways as it is, but yeah, that's what we have going on there. Then to finish this off, we can use a little bit more world edit detailing to give those fences some more realistic uh, curvature uh, to the real ship. So, for this, we're going to place a uh, set of three, um, or actually we can just do it with two, uh, fences horizontally like this. We'll grab the leftmost one right there, paste that over the top left one, grab the right one, we'll paste that over the top right one, then place two back to back, aligned parallel with the ship like this, grab the forwards one, you can clear all that out now and we'll paste it over the bottom two fences, like so. Next, to finish off this last mast right here, we'll grab the iron bar again and place two more going up from that one we had previously to give it a three tall mast right there. And finally, to finish off the smoke stack, we're going to again place down the uh, light blue glazed terracotta right there, with the orientation where the white wool is on the bottom half and the black wool is on the top half. In default, just use black wool for the full thing, but this gives a better coloration compared to the real ship. 
When we have that, we'll then place a Wither Skeleton Skull on top to finish off the um, smokestack curvature right there. That'll be facing backwards as well. Then we're going to place a Dark Oak button out to either side of that um, uh, terracotta right there. In the arrow team pack, this is a red concrete texture, like so. This is for a red symbol on either side of the smokestack right here. In default, you can just use an acacia button for this kind of the same coloration, at least orange-ish, for that uh, detail there to represent that. And then we're just going to place an acacia button on the rear face of that. And with that, the superstructure is complete. All we have left to do now is to build the cranes. Alright, so next up here we have the cranes. And the reason I'm doing this separately from the ship itself is because, well, they're cranes. They move. So the way that I have the cranes built here is how the Tencon stores its cranes while en route. So it has the three foremost cranes here facing directly backwards, and the fourth rear crane facing diagonally forwards against the others like this. Now if you'd like to have the ship docked at port, what you could also do is have any number of these cranes facing directly out to the side towards the port as they would be loading or unloading. For that, you can find images of the real ship on Google to figure out how you'd like to best orientate those um, cranes for your case, or you could just use this setup here with the cranes as they are stowed. So to get started on these, I'll start with the forward crane first here. So on top of this um, uh, stone wall that we have at the base here, we're going to place four more going up, so that's one, two, three, and four. Then for the center block right here, what we can do is just head anywhere and make a cross with the walls, and then one more on top right there to wall that off and then select that center one right there and paste it over the center block of those five so it's branching out to uh, all four sides like this. Then we're going to grab the stone slab. Going up from this here, from the second wall down, we're going to place one, two, and three stone slabs on the bottom half right here with an iron bar on its face. Now this is for if you want it stowed facing down the ship this way. If you would like to rotate the crane the other way around, since this is a flat design right here with no uh, rotation at all, you can place it out this way, or out this way, however you'd like for the crane to be extended. And another important thing to note as well with that is that this is the design with the uh, crane arm here entirely flat. Oftentimes when loading, this would be angled upwards to around 45 degrees or so, and I don't have a design for that currently, but you're more than welcome to try if you'd like, of course. Anyways, that is that. So. For the design that I have it here, with the uh, crane stowed, again that's three slabs back, then an iron bar on its face right there. One more going down, then we're going to grab another skull this time from the heads database. This is going to be a sandstone skull, like this, for the yellow coloration of the um, uh, hooks of the cranes here. Or again, skeleton skull if you'd like instead. But just place one of those below that um, last um, iron bar right there. Then we're going to place two iron bars on top of the outermost two stone slabs right there. One going up and one going back, like so. Oh, those are always the hardest to place. And then we'll place a wither skeleton skull facing backwards, like so. That'll give the base uh, design here of the um, cable here, heading from the winch down to the um, uh, hook there through the arm itself. But to flush this off a little bit more, we can use some more world edit tricks to, uh, well, make it nicer. So for this we can place a single um, iron bar on top of that, so we have all three across right there. And then, uh, let's see, what we'll do is, since we already have that flat wall there actually from that, we'll select that um, iron bar right there, where it's completely flat across, paste it over the one directly above it, and this farthest one out here on the end of that uh, line there. Next, we're going to place two back-to-back -back just anywhere. We'll select the forward-most one there, where it's just connected to the rear edge, and we'll place that over that one right there in the center to isolate that off. Then we'll select a, um, an iron bar where it is just entirely vertical with no outside connections, and paste that over the lower one right there, and then just fix up this wall there by selecting that uh, wall with no connections and pasting it over that one so that isn't connected off to any of that cabling. And that's the design for the rear orientation of the crane. So we can just repeat that twice more here to finish this off. So that's one, two, three, and four. And again, we'll have to use some world edit to uh, fix that up a little bit, but then we'll grab that um, quad orientation of the wall right there, paste it over the center one. Then we have one, two, and three. Stone slabs going back with the skeleton skull right there. One, two, three, one, two, then one and two with the iron bars going down. 
sandstone stole down below there for the um, head of the crane. Then, let's see, we'll paste that over there, select that, paste that there and there to connect that all off. And then just fix up the connection of that uh, cabling there. That's the second one done. So now we just have one left. So that's one, two, three, and four walls with a skeleton skull right there. And clean that up so it doesn't connect off and paste over that quad orientation there for the center to thicken that up. One, two, three stone slabs back. One, two, three, one, two with the iron bars. Two going down there, sandstone skull. And then select that, paste over those two outer edges and then clean up the center connection right there. And there we have it. That is all three of those cranes done. And one thing I did notice while starting to prepare for the final crane here is that there are actually some final details here that I missed. So on the two center cranes here, there actually are some platforms uh, sticking further out from the base here. So uh, on the second crane back here, it's just going to be one out to the right hand side of the ship. This is going to be a lower half. Uh, stone slab right there. And then on the second crane back, it's going to be out to both sides. So lower half slab there and there. And these are small platforms sticking out to either side of the um, control pod right in there. So there's none of them on the first one, actually, and one on the right side of the second and one on both sides of the third right there. So now that I've got that little mistake fixed, we can now move on to the fourth and final crane. So again, up from this uh, wall in the center here, Four more walls going up. One, two, three, and four. And we'll have to fix off those bars again. Fix that up. And then again, your quad orientation in the center of those five right there. With a skeleton skull on top again, this time facing forwards. And now for the three uh, stone slabs here, this is now going to be at a, oh, about a 30 degree angle or so, sticking out forwards like this. So this is going to be one single one there diagonally out from that um, fourth up right there, the second one down, then one more going forwards right there, and then one more at a diagonal angle like so. Next we have an iron bar on the front edge of that right there, second one going down, and then your skull underneath like so. And now for the cabling, this is where it gets a little bit complicated. So we can place an iron bar above that single one right there, then two across that set right there, and then another two right there. And again, if you don't have access to world edit, I suppose this is how you can leave it. But since we do have world edit, we can make it much more nice. So we're going to select this flat panel connection right here, where it's connected to both the front and the back. And we'll paste that over that singular um, iron bar right there. And we can also clean that one up there so it doesn't have that side connection connecting with the other crane. Then we're going to select the vertical orientation with no horizontal connections. Paste that over the rearmost one right there on the bottom side. And we can also paste that uh, flat wall actually over that one above it, like so. So it's connected to the front and the rear like this. Now we're just going to head down here. We'll place an iron bar anywhere. One iron bar off to its left and one iron bar behind it like this. So it's kind of got that angle to it. We'll select the corner one produced by that connection there and paste it over the four most of those two right in there. So that'll give it kind of this little angle here connecting diagonally in uh, through that line there. That is that fourth and final crane complete. And with that, that is everything for the Ken Con. So, congratulations on completing the Ken Con. Thank you so much for choosing a narrow team design. We hope that you enjoyed building it, and we hope that you enjoy having it as a part of whatever project you are using this for. Do feel free to use this in any kind of publicly available project you like, given that you, of course, provide proper credit to the Aero team for these designs. So, if you have built this ship, let us know. We'd love to see how you're using our designs. A link to our Discord server is in the video description below. Feel free to drop on in and show us what you've done. If you enjoyed, please do consider subscribing to the Air Team channel to be the first to see our new aircraft when they come out. Make sure to have a look through the 1 to 5 scale playlist on our channel as well for more builds in this scale to see if there's anything else that catches your interest. Anyways, that is just about it. So, thank you all for watching, and I'll catch you in the next one.